Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, we're going to be doing another one of these tech experiments and as you can probably tell from the title, uh, we're going to be trying to install Microsoft Plus 95 and 98 on Windows 10. Um, I decided that we would take a look at both of these in one video since they are very similar um, programs. And basically if you don't know what these programs were, they were a set of official um, packages that were released by Microsoft that would you know provide uh, some extra programs some cool tweaks just a way to really customize your uh, you know computer and also give it a little bit more functionality um, a lot of the features that were introduced with Microsoft plus have actually made their way into a standard install of Windows 10 um, and even you know older versions of uh, Windows as well I mean this pack Microsoft plus 95 is where Internet Explorer, you know, was first uh, bundled. Internet Explorer 1.0 was bundled in this pack. And also 3D Pinball Space Cadet was bundled in this package as well. Um, I actually have two, like, really in-depth videos. They're both, like, a half an hour long on... Um, I actually have uh, four of them on four different Microsoft Plus packages, but I do have ones for Windows 95 and Windows 98. So if you guys want to really get a more in-depth look at these packages before you watch this video, I would highly recommend that you go and check those out. They'll be up in the cards right now. So without any further ado, let's just get started with it. Um, I, I have downloaded both of these packs from WinWorld, and we're just going to be starting with uh, Plus for Windows 95. And we're going to just run the setup file right here without any compatibility filters or any of the settings modified and just see if it works and it looks like we already have an error message right here a setup initialization error this uh, setup program is not intended to be used with your version of Windows what we will have to do it looks like is go into the uh, properties menu and actually apply some compatibility filters so we're going to run this program in compatibility mode for Windows 95 and we're going to run it as an administrator as well and let's see if running this again no it looks like it's gonna do the exact same thing this setup program is not intended to be used with your version of Windows. Okay, so we ran the um, program compatibility troubleshooter, and for some reason it wants to put the Windows compatibility mode to Windows 8, which I know is not going to actually do anything. Alright, so yeah, a slight change of plans here. I actually went ahead and downloaded OTVDM, and uh, we're going to go ahead and try to run it with that and uh, see if that you know gives us any different results. So we've got OTVDM right here. We're going to drag our setup.exe file onto um, OTVDMW or just OTVDM, and uh, it's going to actually give out the same error. This setup program is not intended to be used with your version of Windows. Yeah, so that kind of sucks. I thought we we're going to be able to get, you know, this one to work. But don't worry, because we do have another program to try out in this video, and that is plus 98. So let's go ahead and try to run this here, and you can see that it actually does the exact, basically the exact same thing. Plus 98 cannot run on this version of Windows. So let us try to do the same thing we did in, uh, you know, for the plus 95 executable and actually put this in compatibility mode for Windows 98 slash Windows ME and see if that fixes the problem. And that actually looks like it did. So that is interesting. So for whatever reason, that worked on plus 98, but it didn't work on plus 95. But uh, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and, and just move on to using plus 98, you know, trying to get this to install because it looks like we're getting a lot farther than we did with uh, plus 95. So we're going to hit next here. We're going to agree to the license agreement, and we're going to put in our CD key. And so check this out, Microsoft Plus 98 includes McAfee virus scan software to help keep your system clean and stable. Before continuing with Plus 98 setup, it is recommended that you have set up scan your system for viruses. Let's go ahead and have McAfee virus scan from 1998 uh, scan our system for viruses and see if it finds anything. That is, that is wonderful. <laughs> oh my gosh, check this out. This is the actual program, McAfee Virus Scan. That is, uh, wow. That is, uh, that is pretty awesome. So it is actually doing, yeah, it, it is actually doing a scan. I wonder if it's going to scan all of, because I've got two different hard disks in this laptop. I wonder if it's going to actually scan all of them. All right, so apparently it has come to a folder, you know, C Windows Software Distribution, where there's a lot of files that, uh, it just says, I mean, it just literally says the path of the file is too long, so it's unable to scan the file, which is kind of hilarious. And I actually don't know how we can get past this, uh, because, I mean, from this application window itself, because there's, like, you, as soon as you hit OK, it just comes up with another box, and you can't, like, I mean, you might be able to, like, to, like, hit stop here. 
but I think we might actually just have to kill the process. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I was able to hit stop. I just press enter uh, fast enough there. So let's go back to our setup here. So it says that setup has completed the uh, virus scan, obviously very successfully. So we're going to go ahead and hit next here. And we're going to do a custom installation just to see what options we can choose here because we want to get everything. So we want to uh, also include the deluxe CD player. No CD-ROM drivers were found on your system. That is actually true because there is no CD-ROM drive. We're just going to install it anyway, um, just because we can. It's only 3.3 megabytes. We're gonna make sure to get all of these desktop themes. This is gonna be really interesting to see how this works on Windows 10. And we're gonna start copying files. Hopefully it won't crash here. Um, but that is good. So yeah, like I said, Microsoft Plus 95 didn't really work out, but I think we got a lot to take a look at with Plus 98 here. So this should be fun. All right, so setup has completed. You can see right here it says it is finished. So we're going to hit the finish button and we need to restart our computer uh, before Plus 98 setup is complete. All right, guys, so we're back. Uh, we have successfully restarted the machine and uh, Microsoft Plus has actually created a program group for us in the start menu. So I went ahead and opened it up with uh, File Explorer here. And what we're gonna do is just kind of go through all these programs, or at least most of them, and see which ones actually work and which ones don't. Uh, it would be very cool if all of these work, but uh, we already know that McAfee Virus Scan works since we basically tried that out. Let's go ahead and check out the games here. We're going to actually start with Spider Solitaire. And uh, wow, check it out. It actually works. I'm going to go ahead and just resize the window here so you guys can see this. And here is Spider Solitaire. It's definitely been a while since I've played this. So I'm not really going to play like an entire round here of Spider Solitaire just because it would take... Uh, you know, very long, and honestly, I could do like an entire video just playing Spider Solitaire. Don't know how many of you guys would actually watch that. Um, but uh, yeah, so the game does work. That is like the biggest thing. So yeah, that is Spider Solitaire. We'll go ahead and close out of that. Uh, lose your marbles, I think. Oh my gosh, well, it's resized to like 640 by 480. Okay, so if you guys are seeing this clip, it means that the game worked, but there was literally no option to actually change the screen resolution from the game settings. There were literally no options that you could modify, which kind of sucks because uh, I wanted to show you guys the game, it just wasn't really working. I mean, well, like the game launched and it worked properly, um, but you just couldn't see anything. So the footage is kind of unusable. Um, but that does answer this question. This game works, Spider Solitaire works. I'm pretty sure Golf 1998 is gonna do probably the same thing that Lose Your Marbles did, and that is gonna launch full screen. Let's go ahead and try this out here. And, uh, oh, it actually comes up with an error message saying Microsoft Golf 1998 Edition requires Windows 95 with DirectX 5 or higher. So we'll go under Compatibility. We'll run this program in Compatibility Mode for Windows 98. We'll hit Apply and OK. It does the exact same thing. Microsoft Golf 1998 Edition requires Windows 95 with DirectX 5 or higher. So we're going to start out with the Deluxe CD Player, which uh, we obviously don't have a CD-ROM drive. Uh, and that's exactly what it's going to tell us. It says there is no CD-ROM player attached to this computer, so it can't start. So the program literally can't even start unless there is a CD-ROM drive attached to the system. So that kind of sucks as well. Uh, desktop themes is what I'm really interested in. Um, which is very strange. Why is this... That's interesting. Why is this trying to open CD player? It, it even changed the icon right there. Wait a second. Did you guys just see that? I double clicked on disk cleanup and it opened up picture and express. What? I, I think that maybe these shortcuts, like I, I wonder what this is pointing to. Let's open file location. Yeah, for some reason it's, it's pointing that shortcut to deluxe CD. Um, so let's actually just go into, so we were on deluxe CD, we did golf, marbles, um, OA plus what was this yeah this just looks like you know some of yeah like this is what we what the background of the setup uh, program was I believe so this just looks like some files you know for the actual program um, Pi is picture it express well since picture it express opened up let's just try to run that and uh, just kind of test out this program so there you go uh, yeah if you did want to use this wonderful piece of software to modify photos on Windows 10, well, I'm here to tell you that you can do it. All right, so we're back. Um, I actually just did a full reinstall of the program, 
and uh, now we actually have the desktop themes program running here. I actually could not find this. I searched through uh, you know, the entire like installation folder for plus 98 and I went into the themes folder and there were a bunch of theme files in there but there was no executable so I think something might have happened when we tried to run whatever program that it was and it, you know, pushed it to the CD player instead and opened that program. What I want to do here is this is what I was kind of interested in from the very beginning is just see um, what themes we can apply which it looks like we'll have to click other here and actually open up um a dot theme file which there is a ton of these at least oh maybe there isn't well these are all of the themes here but if we go into um the themes folder like from within just a standard uh, file explorer session you'll see in here that there's all of these dot the files which i wonder if they're actually supposed to be theme files let's try to rename this here to just dot theme and see if that actually that might be the problem yeah that is actually the problem so for some reason uh, I don't know why that is that's very strange it literally uh, made all of these files dot the files but they're really supposed to be dot theme and this is actually a great uh, time for a little bit of a tech tip here how you actually can rename multiple files um, much more quickly and much more automated by using command prompts. Let's go ahead and just navigate to uh, the program files x86 folder right here. Then we're going to go into the plus folder, and I believe it is under themes. So we will cd themes, and if we do a dir slash w, you'll see we have all of these dot the files right here. So what we want to do is type in rename star dot the star dot theme press enter and now if i refresh this you see that all of these files are now dot theme and that took like literally five seconds rather than me having to go in here and press f2 and change the uh you know file extension like for each one of these files you could just do it um pretty much automatically uh, through command prompt here with very little effort. So that is pretty awesome. All right, so now you can see here I just uh, restarted the program and now all of the themes from the uh, you know plus 98 folder have shown up in here. So we can kind of go through and pick, um, and well actually that just caused the entire program to crash for some reason, that's not good. Um, okay, well <laughs> that's, we got architect to work. Okay, well that makes absolutely no sense. The entire program is just crashing now. All right, so we're back once again, and something like really strange is happening. I really have no idea what's going on, but I actually restarted the system once again, and uh, when I booted back up, because Plus had actually like, the installer was still running in the background, so it asked me once I closed out of the themes program to restart the system. So I did that, and then when I booted back up, the desktop themes application was deleted. So I don't know why that's happening. I went ahead and ran the installation program again, and now it's actually working. You can see here that the desktop themes program is here, and we can go through and pick all of these themes, you know, pick from, you know, whichever one that we want. And they appear uh, to, yeah, so it seems like they're actually working now. Before it was causing the program to crash, but now it's actually uh, working. So I'm not going to restart the system. I'm going to just avoid doing that because I don't want this to happen again. Um, but we're going to actually go ahead and try to apply one of these themes here. And oh my gosh, it's actually somewhat working. Let me go ahead and minimize the uh, browser window here. You can see here that my cursor has changed. You can probably see that. Um, the window, like the font has changed. The size of the title bar has also changed. And it's also set a uh, desktop background, which actually looks pretty decent, uh, you know, considering that this was a, you know, background that was designed for, like, an old, you know, non-1920 by 1080 display. It actually looks pretty good. Um, it is definitely, uh, you know, uh, scaled nicely. Um, and it looks like that all of the sounds have kind of come into effect as well. It's thinned these out, like, the actual uh, progress indicators for, like, how... Uh, much space is used up on your hard drive that's been changed it's kind of like shrunk that down uh, which is kind of nice so I think like yeah the the entire font is just a lot smaller whatever font that it's using and you can see even in like like this over here like where it says Michael Acer right here this is a, a different font as well um, all of the icons don't seem to have changed it's actually not applied the screensaver 
but it looks like we can apply it manually. And yeah, this is something that would happen when you would try to load uh, some of these themes. It would kind of hang like as it was loading uh, the new theme. And this is actually, this font is totally, you know, super tiny here, but it says an error occurred while creating the wallpaper preview. Uh, just for this like preview window, it, it was taking like an insanely long amount of time for it to like make a wallpaper, you know, preview. So it just says it's not going to show up. Um, so this is the Win98 theme, which is actually not complete. You see some of these icons are from the previous theme. This isn't even a, like this icon didn't even exist when these like Windows 98, uh, you know, came out. This is obviously the Windows 10. Uh, this isn't even my computer. This is the File Explorer icon. Um, so we can hit apply here, and uh, so this is going to change, you can see we have a new cursor there, it actually looks pretty nice. Uh, the wallpaper is just a solid blue color, which still looks pretty nice. Um, and we have a sound pack as well that is still here. Now obviously not everything is going to work, but it's still pretty impressive that it's able to take the screen savers, or at least some of them, uh, all the sound effects, the mouse pointers, like the desktop wallpaper, um, and the actual font as well. Yeah, it will actually change the font. You can see here, this one actually like the uh, buttons up here are kind of getting cut off. The only other program we have that we haven't taken a look at is the cleanup program. And this is a program as the name kind of suggests to clean up uh, space on your hard disk. All right, so we're back. The uh, file cleaner has actually successfully loaded up here. Apparently, this is the Cybermedia non-critical file cleaner. Uh, so it's made by a company called Cybermedia Incorporated. Not sure if they're still around, but uh, I assume they had some deal with Microsoft to actually bundle this with Microsoft Plus. And basically what it is, is it's kind of just exactly as I thought it was. It is a file cleaner that, and it just, it just crashed, <laughs> but. All right guys, so here we are once again. Yeah, this is the uh, program right here. And last time I tried to go through and click on some of these things and the program just uh, crashed. But basically what this is, is it is a program, as it says, a non-critical file cleaner where you can go through, uh, you can find, you know, uh, types of files that, you know, you want to search the system for, for any like unused kind of unnecessary files. Mainly temporary files is something that I would probably uh, use this program for, and it's just going to crash anyway. So, um, so yeah, this this program partly works, but it seems to just want to crash uh, when you actually try to do anything with it. But overall, guys, I am definitely very impressed at uh, at you know what we were able to do in this video, getting this program to run on Windows 10. Obviously, like I said earlier, it was kind of unfortunate that the uh, 95 version of this pack didn't work, but at least we got to spend the majority of this video talking about plus 98 and uh, seeing what program work and what programs don't work in Windows 10. So again, if you guys want to go ahead and, uh, you know, try this out for yourself, go ahead and check out the link down below in this video's description. So you can go ahead and go to uh, WinWorld. They make it very convenient to actually download this and get it up and running on your system. But hey, do you guys know what isn't convenient? Password management. Yeah, it's something that we all have to do, but it can definitely be a major chore, especially when you're dealing with trying to manage multiple different unique passwords on every single website that you use. Well, that is where today's video sponsor, Dashlane, comes into play. Dashlane is the secure password manager and digital wallet designed to make your online life easier. Have you ever tried to log into a website and just couldn't remember what your password was? Maybe it's one of those sites that you don't use very often, so you have to go through the password recovery process, or maybe you just try a few of your most used passwords and end up getting locked out of your account temporarily. Yeah, it's happened to all of us. Managing passwords on all of your online accounts can be a huge hassle, but this is where Dashlane comes in. Instead of coming up with unique passwords yourself, Dashlane can do it for you. It keeps all of your passwords stored in a secure vault that only you have access to with a single master password. It can also generate secure passwords for you right from your web browser and autofill in form data like addresses and credit card numbers. This allows you to breeze through signup forms and log into all of your accounts with just one click. You can download Dashlane for free on Windows, macOS, Linux, Android, or iOS. So, if you're interested in trying out Dashlane for completely free on your first device, follow the link in this video's description to get started today. So guys, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, definitely be sure to give this video a thumbs up, be sure to get subscribed down below, and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever that I upload a new video, which I do every single week on this channel. 
And uh, be sure to drop me a comment down below, guys, letting me know your thoughts on this video, or if you guys have any video suggestions for uh, you know future things you'd like to see on this channel, as I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say. And uh, as always, guys, I just want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.